Welcome to the HIV Community Link Shifting Perspectives e-learning series. Part 1, Defining Sex Work. Sex work is a broad term used to describe the exchange of sexual services or performances for financial or material compensation. Payment for services may be in the form of money, physical items, substances, or housing. Sex work can include activities which involve direct physical contact between the buyer and the seller, and may also be activities where indirect sexual stimulation occurs, such as exotic dancing, phone sex, adult film, and webcam performance. Given the diversity of employment situations in the sex industry, sex work takes place in many venues, on the streets, indoors, in massage parlors, homes, or strip clubs, or on the internet. Although sex work tends to be thought of as a woman's issue, it is important to note that all genders are represented in the sex industry. Male and transgender people are frequently less visible in the industry, and their voices and experiences are less often heard. You will note throughout this presentation that the term sex work is used to describe the work of the sex industry. This is a rights-based and employment-focused term, which we use to describe work which is voluntary and consensual. The diversity of the sex industry cannot be overstated. Each employment area of the industry operates within its own complex hierarchy, influenced by intersecting vulnerabilities of race, gender, and socioeconomic status. Reasons for entry into sex work vary greatly. It can be an active employment choice, a decision influenced heavily by poverty or substance use, or it may not be a decision at all. It is important to note that reasons for entry into the industry may diverge significantly from the factors which maintain involvement. Sex work that begins as exploitation can later become autonomous, and sex work that begins with choice can later become constrained by financial need, or choice can be taken away by exploitation. There is a large scope of lived experience among sex workers. Sex work can be associated with poverty, addictions issues, mental health challenges, and significant threats to personal safety. Sex work can also be an empowering experience for many workers, allowing them the opportunity to make a significant amount of money while doing something they largely enjoy. A common threat which permeates the industry is stigma. Sex work and sex workers remain highly stigmatized on both social and structural levels. This stigma impacts sex workers in a range of complex and intersecting ways, frequently presenting significant personal health and safety challenges and limiting opportunities for support. Race, gender, ability, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status all interact and influence experiences of stigma in sex work. Sex work brings together two forms of power, sex and money. Groups or individuals with limited social and economic power may have very different experiences in sex work than those where this power is higher. One of the questions most frequently asked about the sex industry in Calgary is about its size. It may be impossible to ever get an accurate understanding of the number of sex workers currently working in Calgary or the scope of the local sex industry. Sex work is often transient. Many sex workers will tour across Canada, working for a few days out of a major Canadian city before moving on. Others may live in neighboring provinces, but come to Alberta to work because their earning potential may be higher and their anonymity may be greater. The stigma associated with sex work prevents a significant barrier to individuals with identifying their sex work involvement. Much of the work is underground, and many are reluctant to identify themselves for fear of legal ramifications or social stigma. Although street sex work is the most visible form of sex work and tends to heavily influence the public's understanding of the sex industry, it represents only about 10% of local sex work. 90% of sex work is occurring behind closed doors and out of the public eye. Across the country, street sex work at most represents only about 20% of the industry, and this number continues to decline in most major urban centers. Data collected by the SHIFT program indicates that the majority of local sex workers are working independently as escorts or for escort agencies. And the next slides will spend some time taking a closer look at what these areas of the industry entail. Escorting services are sold as companionship rather than sexual services, and the fees are based on the length of time requested by a customer. In Canada, it is illegal to communicate publicly about the sale of sexual services, and it is also illegal for individuals to profit off the sale of sexual services. For these reasons, escort agencies cannot be transparent about what their business really entails. This prevents the implementation of clear health and safety standards such as safer sex and STI testing policies, adequate security personnel, and upfront discussions about what sexual services will and will not be provided by an escort. 
The lack of regulation around the sexual services aspect of escorting leads to tremendous variances in the safety practices implemented by an agency and the experiences of those working for the agency. Escort agencies are licensed as businesses on a local level and regulations vary between municipalities. In Calgary, escorts are not permitted to work independently and can only work for a licensed agency. The inconsistency of the health and safety practices of agencies, however, prevent many individuals from working as licensed escorts. They may find they are more in control of their safety by working alone. The fine for escorting without a license in Calgary is currently $1,000. Research has shown that formal workplace safety policies and supports lead to an increased ability to negotiate safer sex practices. Higher levels of control over the work environment are also positively related to emotional well-being. The current law and bylaws related to the escort industry continue to present barriers for sex workers to obtaining the structural supports and control needed to work safer. Street-based sex work tends to be strongly associated with poverty or substance use. The distinctions between indoor and street-based sex work are not always clear-cut. Individuals who have previously worked on the street may transition to internet-based work, but they may return to street-based work when financial needs are high. Situations where financial needs are high and immediate can increase the chances of engaging in riskier sexual behaviors, compromising on boundaries or safety practices, and of experiencing exploitation. Street sex work is considered to be the riskiest area of the industry with higher rates of violence, robbery, and criminalization of workers. The high visibility of street work increases the chances of attracting police attention and often pushes the work to isolated, poorly lit areas. Relations with police are often tenuous and prevent sex workers from reporting incidences of violence. Current laws prohibiting the communication publicly about the sale of sex also severely restrict the ability of workers to negotiate safety with their customers before getting into a car. All of these factors contribute to a marginalizing work environment where abusers may take advantage of this greater imbalance in power to perpetrate violence, robbery, and sexual assault. For these abusers, the presumption is that the workers will not go to the police and that they will not be caught. Street sex work has experienced a gradual decline in Calgary over the last five years, while indoor and internet-based work has steadily increased. Although indoor working environments tend to be related to higher safety for sex workers, these often invisible and underground working locations can also isolate sex workers from support and make effective outreach more difficult. Sex work has been historically conceptualized as either low-end, often referring to street sex work, or high-end, referring to online and agency escorts. As the internet continues to become the dominant vehicle for the sale of sexual services, the class distinctions associated with sex work also change. Individuals working online may be high income earning and execute a high level of control over their work, or they may be low income earning and be more limited in their sex work involvement. The accessibility and growth of the internet marketplace has increased the diversity of backgrounds and experiences of sex workers more than ever before. The decline in street sex work has been significant enough to warrant local media attention. Here is a screenshot of a February 2013 article in the Calgary Sun. Note the use of the word hooker in the article headline. Unfortunately, the use of this kind of stigmatizing language is still all too common in the media. Calgary street sex work stroll areas have halved since 2010, with the downtown high track and men's stroll area disappearing. Currently, most of the street sex work activity in Calgary is concentrated in the Forest Lawn area and in the downtown area around Center Street. Calgary Police Services have largely shifted the focus of their policing during this time period, focusing more efforts on arresting sex purchasers than sex workers. Sex worker arrests continue to remain low. There isn't a single answer to directly explain the shift in sex work distribution in Calgary. It can likely be attributed to a number of factors. While aggressive policing is not an effective strategy for reducing street sex work, the organized crime-affiliated high-track area downtown was significantly impacted by large-scale police busts. Ongoing stings in the Forest Lawn and Center Street area make quiet activity following a major sting operation, but the effects are often short-lived. Generally speaking, sex workers working indoors are much less visible and therefore have much less chance of being known to police or being arrested. It also means that it may be easier to hide underage or sexually exploited individuals behind internet-based advertisements. Policing the sex industry also becomes more difficult online. A number of social and environmental factors have also impacted the local sex industry. Both the internet and cellular phones are not new technologies, but the widespread accessibility of low-cost, Wi-Fi-capable smartphones is a much more recent phenomena. An individual may be living at a homeless shelter or transitional housing program 
and with a Visa gift card from the corner store and some public Wi-Fi, they can easily post ads for sexual services online. This is again indicative of how stratified the sex industry has become through the internet. The changing face of the sex industry calls for a change in the way that sex workers serving programs approach connecting with those involved. Shift has expanded outreach to sex workers beyond the streets to local escort agencies, massage parlors, and a range of online venues that target different areas and different populations within the sex industry. We have also worked to improve the program accessibility by offering additional web and mobile friendly communication options. The availability of harm reduction services becomes even more important in the invisible internet era of sex work. Technology puts a barrier between you and the person you are trying to communicate with. It is easy for your messages to go overlooked or be ignored. It is extremely important that services for sex workers are non-judgmental, low barrier, and directed by the people receiving them. This means that leaving the sex industry is only a focus if an individual wants it to be. We support individuals to flee from unsafe situations, transition to another type of employment, or become safer and more empowered within the sex industry. A harm reduction approach also requires more attention to program development and increased diversity of the direct services offered to sex workers. There is no one-size-fits-all way of working within this diversity. Services must be flexible and program staff must have expertise in providing supports ranging from crisis intervention, basic needs, counseling, trauma, and employment coaching. Empowering sex workers to obtain their highest quality of life and well-being requires supportive relationships to aid individuals in addressing their personal needs and goals. These relationships facilitate access to community resources and advance the building of personal, human, social, physical, and financial assets, as well as enhance resiliency. Supporting sex workers also requires attending to the larger systemic causes of stigma, criminalization, and discrimination that place sex workers as a population at greater risk of violence and reduced well-being when compared to other Canadians. Thank you for listening to the first presentation in this special sex work series. If you would like to find out more about the SHIFT program at HIV Community Link, or learn more about sex work at one of our workshops, please visit our website at www.shiftcalgary.org.